Bribery, Shakes, Death, FIFA Corruption and the 2022 Qatar World Cup. All the news and discoveries made that stirred spirits all over the world and brought a lot of controversy. This is the untold truth about Qatar. FIFA's memberships began to skyrocket in the 60s and 70s. It had about 170 members by the 1980s, largely spread out among six confederations, each of which had its own qualification competitions. See how FIFA's income increased consistently with practically every competition until the 1980s television's boom, to see how the organization continued becoming rich. At that point, the value of World Cup sponsorships, merchandising and television rights reached millions. 24 officials had the majority of the power over all of this money. The president and certain top officials, including the heads of each confederation. The executive committee, or EXCO, was represented by this group. They had the authority to allocate funds from FIFA to its member nations for the purpose of constructing football fields, hosting competitions and developing youth academies. FIFA made the decision to move the vote from Congress to EXCO in 1964 because of this culture of corruption. As a result, nations now only require to earn the votes of 13 EXCO members in order to host the World Cup. Since FIFA transferred their headquarters to Switzerland a long time ago, it was difficult to track their finances. The nations who submitted bids for FIFA's consideration spent millions of dollars on a two-year gauntlet of PR activities by pledging to build new stadiums, hotels, infrastructures and television deals. This developed into the part of this bidding procedure that was visible to the public. At first look, Qatar's candidacy appeared to be unlikely. It's a very tiny nation with an unsuccessful World Cup qualifying football squad. In addition, it was too hot for football. In the summer, temperatures could exceed 50 degrees. Qatar only has one significant city and one stadium large enough to host a World Cup game in 2010. However, Qatar did have some of the world's greatest natural gas reserves and a tremendous amount of riches, all of which were under the hands of the nation's emir, Hamad bin Khalifa Al Thani, and they were prepared to utilize them in order to win the 2022 bid. It made an effort that other nations couldn't match, promising to invest an astounding $200 billion in infrastructures and build 12 brand new air-conditioned stadiums. Additionally, they didn't overlook EXCO. According to claims made by British media, Warner received payment of almost $2 million from a business with Qatari ownership. There are also claims that Qatar paid three other EXCO members. Even though no one has been tried for accepting bribes from Qatar since the vote, 13 of the 22 EXCO members present that year have either been indicted or banned from FIFA at some point. Allegations surfaced weeks after the 2010 vote, but it wasn't until 2015 that the FBI arrested several FIFA officials in Zurich and began investigation into decades of FIFA's dealings. Sepp Blatter resigned in disgrace among numerous controversies. FIFA handed Congress the authority to vote on World Cup host once more in 2016 in an effort to clean up its act. As a result, the 2018 World Cup in Russia went on as scheduled and brought in record money for FIFA. Qatar is also anticipated to follow the same path. What is the reality about human rights and foreign workers? Qatar is heavily dependent on external labor. According to Amnesty International, 90% of the workforce in the nation consists of 1.7 million foreign laborers. Most of these workers are from Bangladesh, India, Nepal and Pakistan. Human rights organizations have questioned their workplace rights circumstances and treatment as a result of the Kafala sponsorship-based employment program, which had contractually bound employees to their human employers. 
The experiences of migrant working adults have been documented by Rights Watch. Some of these situations, like being in an open space, give the impression that you are free but really imprison you within. So what is Kafala system? The Kafala system is a system used to monitor migrant laborers, working primarily in the construction and domestic sectors in Gulf Cooperation Council member states. The system requires all migrant workers to have an in-country sponsor, usually their employer, who is responsible for their visa and legal status. This practice has been criticized by human rights organizations for creating easy opportunities for the exploitation of workers, as many employers take away passports and abuse their workers with little chance of legal repercussions. <laughs> त्यो टिकुलिया बजारको साथी थियो त्यो गयो छ त्यो भनियो दिपलाल त्यो त्यहाँ राम्रो सेलरी आउँछ महिने महिने सेलरी दिन्छ कम्पनी पनि राम्रो छ त्यै भएर त्यहाँ आउ त्यो राम्रो हुन्छ त्यो त्यो गैस सिलिन्डर ल त्यो मजबुरी हुन्छ अब 15 16 हात लाम लामो खालको पाप हुन्छ यति मोटो त्यै तेर लाइटर ले बारी रह त्यो गैस खोले रह त्यो रोल पोल चुग धूप में त्यो छत के ऊपर माथी Villagers in Gol Bazar carry a heavy weight as they conduct Umesh Kumar Yadav's final run. He was 32. It's an unexpected goodbye. Shashank, a 13-month-old baby, is being held by his grandpa as the son traditionally fires his father's funeral pyre in Nepal. In the last weeks, leading up to the World Cup, Umesh, a laborer in Qatar, frequently uploaded TikToks recordings of the dormitory where he stayed and the construction sites where he worked. Umesh passed a day after this video was shot. Lashman, his cousin, who had arrived in Nepal from Qatar, where he also worked, hurried to the scene as soon as he learned that Umesh had passed away. Four of us went to ask what happened. They told us Umesh was taking the scaffold lift up. When it touched something and broke, he fell down. This was where it happened. The company said their site was safe and that Umesh's death was due to his own negligence and recklessness. Umesh fathers sold some of his buffalo to pay for his son to go to Qatar. Here, life is tough. So too is death. My son is gone. We used the money he sent us to pay for our loans and for our children's education. Now we don't have any money. I'm not sure what we are going to do. Analysis by The Guardian in 2021 revealed that at least 6,500 migrant workers had died in Qatar since the World Cup was awarded. The 2022 World Cup is a prize that's been won on the back of thousands who've suffered and died for someone else's sport in glory. Today I feel uh, Qatari, today I feel Arab, today I feel African, today I feel uh, gay, today I feel disabled, today I feel uh, a migrant worker. The rights of women, despite a pledge to move towards greater general quality of male guardianship system still exists. The rules are complicated, but they give men control over women from making their own decision on things such as marriage or travel. There's also a ban on same-sex relations. Homosexuality is illegal in Qatar. People can be jailed and under Sharia law could be sentenced to death for homosexual acts, which is not the kind of progressive modern image FIFA wants at its showpiece event, and that also goes for the big brands involved in lucrative sponsorships. 
The death penalty is still legal in the state, although there has only been one reported case of the sentence being carried out in the past 22 years, meaning that deportations, fines or imprisonment are far more likely punishments. What are the legal do's and don'ts when visiting Qatar, alcohol and drugs? It is legal to consume alcohol if you are over the age of 21 in Qatar if purchased in licensed bars or restaurants. Some restrictions over licensing have been relaxed for the tournament, with beer being available to fans after 6.30 pm in fan zones and before and after matches in the 8th stadium compound. Drinking in public is still strictly prohibited, as is private consumption resulting in intoxication or the disturbing of other people, all of which is punishable by up to 3 imprisonment and heavy fines. Any fans attempting to smuggle illegal drugs into the country are expected to face serious consequences. The death penalty is permitted for this offense, but more likely is a heavy J sentence, clothing and dress code. Fans have been advised to dress modestly with shoulders covered and avoidance of short skirts. Short or sleeveless tops are not recommended with entry to some official buildings, likely to be denied if found to be shy of modesty standards, according to the Qatar Tourism Authority. Smoking and vaping. Smoking is legal in Qatar but prohibited in all public spaces with potential fines. The importation, purchase and use of electronic cigarettes has been outlawed in Qatar since 2014, with offenders facing up to 3 months imprisonment and a fine. Medications Fans traveling with medication are advised to contact the Qatari embassy, as many legal prescription drugs in the UK are banned in the Gold State, like Xanax or Valium. Drugs such as these can carry the same penalties as other illegal substances. Behavior and Intimacy Swearing and lewd gestures are prohibited by Qatari law, with deportation or imprisonment possible punishments for these crimes. Any form of public intimacy, such as kissing, whether heterosexual or homosexual, can lead to arrest in Qatar. The state is also known for strict laws against homosexuality and on members of the LGBT plus community. Anybody found guilty of leading, instigating or seducing a male by in any way to commit sodomy can legally face the death penalty, but more likely is a jail sentence or deportation. Many players are now perhaps more concerned about the reports of violation of migrant workers' rights in Qatar. One of my favorite images is of the German national football team, the players put human rights across their chests, so increasingly athletes are saying we don't want to play in a stadium that workers died to build. A number of teams are planning to make a statement on the fields like Denmark, whose players will wear toned down shirts in protest. Meanwhile, the host nation has worked hard to polish its image. Qatar is paying David Beckham $277 million to serve as an ambassador for the 2022 World Cup. Promotional videos paint Qatar as the perfect tourist destination, and they seem to be working. The tournament's chief organizer said there's been a record-breaking demand for tickets. Qatar expects to make as much as $17 billion in revenue from the World Cup, but the big question is, how will a country that's nearly 200 times smaller than Saudi Arabia accommodate all these spectators? Today, Qatar Tourism estimates it has about 30,000 regular hotel rooms, but 80% of those have been booked by FIFA for official guests. As alternative, Qatar has leased two cruise ships that can fit under 10,000 people. Called on homeowners to rent their properties to fans and coordinated shuttle flights so visitors can stay in neighboring countries. Tourists are also being offered tents in the desert, but for LGBTQ fans, the main concern isn't where to stay in Qatar, but whether or no they will ever be safe there. We do not stop anybody from coming to Doha with any different backgrounds, any different belief. Qatar is a very welcoming country. Qatari law tells a different story. Homosexuality is still illegal and punishable by prison. Some hotels have said they will refuse accommodation for same-sex couples. In the end, 
we are looking at several factors that play an essential role in the corruption of FIFA and the organization of the World Cup in Qatar 2022. The money and power of the Qatari government have shown the true face of death, but what will happen after the end of the World Cup? If you liked our documentary, please subscribe, like and share this video. Don't forget to watch the next video. Thank you.